previous video I talked about anterior dislocation in the, of the shoulder and now I'm talking about posterior dislocation of the shoulder so what is the mechanism of posterior dislocation of the shoulder adduction and internal rotation will cause posterior dislocation of the shoulder so adduction and internal rotation adduction and internal rotation adduction and internal rotation adduction and internal rotation cause posterior dislocation of the shoulder how can exaggerated adduction and internal rotation be done it can be done by an, a, a strong epileptic shock okay or epileptic fit as we can see here it's a patient with epileptic fit who faces a strong adduction and internal rotation and a posterior dislocation of the shoulder as a result a similar mechanism of electrical shock strong electrical shock can cause adduction internal rotation and posterior dislocation of the shoulder I would like to remind you that anterior dislocation of the shoulder is caused by a falling down on outstretched hand okay falling down on backward falling down on outstretched hand as I mentioned previously how can we investigate posterior dislocation of the shoulder by x-ray of course anterior posterior and lateral x-ray can show us what we call bulb electrical bulb sign okay electrical bulb sign the view will be like an electrical bulb okay electrical bulb sign is an indicator of posterior dislocation of the shoulder okay what can be done to treat this condition first of all we have to make sure that neurovascular functions is normal we have to do neurovascular examination then we have to reduce the shoulder in a place so how can we reduce shoulder in place it can be reduced by reverse the mechanism of the dislocation of the posterior dislocation as we said posterior dislocation is the result of adduction and internal rotation so we have to externally rotate the arm but first we have to pull the arm we have to pull the arm to track the arm to give a chance of external rotation of the arm after that so pull and external rotation then we have again to do new vascular examination to make sure that we haven't made any injuries by our reduction and after that we have to put sling for one to two weeks exercise is advisable in this condition but the exercises should cope with uh, this the case and not to make an injury a further injury so neurovascular examination reduction by external rotation neurovascular examination again sling for one two weeks and exercise uh, okay now I'll move to a different subject which is recurrent dislocation of the shoulder recurrent dislocation of the shoulder recurrent dislocation of the shoulder is a common condition as a result of some injuries from the previous dislocations so as we can see in this picture uh, abduction and external rotation will cause recurrent dislocation most of cases so patient have previous patients have previous dislocations and while doing full abduction and external rotation they have another dislocation or a recurrent dislocation of the shoulder so abduction and external rotation abduction and 
external rotation abduction and external rotation okay <clears throat> the underlying pathology of recurrent dislocation of the shoulder is some defects resulted from the previous dislocation of the shoulder okay so the previous dislocations will cause some defects that cause another dislocation this defects is two hell sacs lesion hell sacs lesion and pancart lesion hell sacs lesion actually is a, a posterior lateral defect in the bones of the humerus posterior lateral defects of the bones of the humerus head okay so this is posterior lateral defect of the humerus posterior lateral defect of the humerus posterior lateral Difficult. This is a lateral view, okay? So here we can see a posterior lateral defect, and here is a posterior lateral defect of head of humerus. This posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus engages with the glenoid cavity when the arm is abducted and external rotation rotated in normal cases, okay? So this part should engage with the glenoid cavity, but the defect of the uh, of the posterior uh, posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus will cause no engagement when abduction when abduction and external rotation so this will cause no engagement and dislocation no engagement and dislocation as a result of the defect of the posterior lateral part of the head of the humerus okay so this is the first lesion hell sac hell sacs lesion hell sacs lesion Hell sacs lesion. Okay, the other defect is pancart lesion. Pancart lesion, as we can see, happens or occurs in the lower part of the labrum. The labrum is an important structure that rim that runs around runs around the glenoid cavity. Okay, increase the joint stability with the humerus head. Uh, the in some dislocations, uh, punk, uh, pancart lesion or uh, defect in the anterior la lateral part of the labrum will cause another dislocation. So this is pancart lesion, and this is hell sac lesion induction and external rotation. So these two uh, elements will lead to. A recurrent dislocation of the shoulder. So don't forget, hell sacs lesion, posterior lateral defect of the head of the humerus, pancart lesion is a torn uh, inferior uh, labrum of the glenoid cavity. And the recurrent dislocation is caused by abduction and external rotation.